Їхав, їхав козак містом під копитом, камінь тріснув та радо, під копитом камінь тріснув та раз-два. Під копитом камінь тріснув, соловейко маю свиснув та раз-два. Tucked away in the heart of Germany, steeped in traditional Bavarian culture, lies the historic city of Eichstadt. For centuries, this city has been, and continues to be, a cradle of European Catholic intellect. Recently, however, Eichstätt has become increasingly well known as a site of unique ecumenical importance to the Universal Church. The source of this international attention is the fruit of one man's vision, and his desire, born out of bitter Holy Land experience, to create a place where Christians of different rites could live, study, and pray together the ecumenical seminary, the Collegium Orientale. Christians, who all announce Jesus Christ, who all preach the gospel, they quarrel with each other, they fight against each other, they jostle each other away from these liturgical places. They emphasize to one another that they alone are the only true church. I thought, this can't be the sense of Christianity. We became untrustworthy witnesses. Founded in 1988, the special mission of this seminary is to provide an education to young men from countries where, either through economic hardship or the persecution of Christians, they are prevented from responding to their vocation. They live together here in the Collegium Orientale, young men from the Eastern churches who are motivated to serve the church or to serve people, who come to this place to receive a good education. We can offer them help for their formation, offer them studies, or we can offer financial support for their studies. Our seminary in Lvov was previously a communist youth camp during the Soviet period. There are more than 200 seminarians now, and there is not much place to live. There are three to four boys in one room. Here, now we can prepare ourselves better to grow more with God. It was really hard there to be alone with God and pray privately, because everybody could see you wherever you were, wherever you went. In the chapel you can see everything too. I think that here, when I can stay alone in my room, it gives me a better possibility to grow. I like this place. You feel like a normal person, a normal student. Our rector teaches us responsibility for ourselves. For example, there is no police regime. If there is a problem, a misunderstanding, everybody meets and discusses who is wrong, who is not. I appreciate this, and I like it very much. I 
No matter what nationality you are, you are the student, you are the seminarian. It doesn't matter if you are Orthodox, Catholic, Romanian, Ukrainian, Slovakian, Bulgarian, German, it doesn't count. You are a part of a family, a community. Only then can you live normally. Naturally, an education about the different rights of the Church is part of the Collegium's program. It's like this. It really is a platform where students study together, pray together, live together, and get to know each other. Many of the students come from Central and Eastern Europe, where until recently worship was forbidden. Today, the church does not have the resources to respond to the growth in vocations. When I was a child, my mother took me to church, or better said, to the underground church. Under communism, under the dictatorship of Ceausescu, we visited two underground Greek Catholic priests imprisoned for several years because they refused to convert to the Orthodox Church. I believe faith came to me from God through my family. My grandfather was a priest, but I don't think that this was the reason for my entering in the seminary. Our Greek Catholic Church was persecuted and pressured by Communists. When the Communists, the Soviets left, the curtain, the pressure was gone, and many people came back to church. Therefore, there are a lot of vocations. When I went to the seminary, there were three and a half persons for one place. My father was a communist. He has an appropriate first name for this, Stalin. It's strange, isn't it? But my grandmother had a strong faith. And I remember when I was a little boy, she talked to me about Christ, about the world of angels, what will happen after death. It stayed printed in my mind. After this, when I was older, what she said came back to me. I started to think about it. My faith came together with the painting of icons. I think that man learns faith throughout life. I cannot imagine my life without painting. I simply paint. I was always painting. 